John Edwards Presgrave Howey was born in 1886. Educated at Eton and apprenticed at Vickers, Howey's considerable family wealth meant he could indulge himself with a nine and a half inch gauge railway around the family home at Stoughton Manor, as well as purchase a 60 horsepower Napier. A visit to the Rill Miniature Railway in North Wales with Wenman Bassett Loke convinced him of the merits of 15 inch gauge railways. Bassett Loke must have been a good salesman because Howie ordered from him a new Class 60 Pacific designed by Henry Greenley and named John Anthony. Accordingly, in 1913, the Stoughton Manor Railway was relayed in 15 inch gauge, but unfortunately, Howie had little time to enjoy his new locomotive. In 1914, Howie was commissioned into the Bedfordshire Yeomanry and seconded to the Royal Flying Corps. Flying as an observer, he was shot down and taken prisoner of war, and due to ill health, was repatriated in 1917 via Switzerland. Howie moved to Belgravia after the war, and already a keen motorist, he found a new pursuit, racing. He soon struck up a friendship with a fellow millionaire, Count Louis Borowski and also with a less wealthy but very talented engineer and racing driver, John Parry Thomas. Parry Thomas was chief engineer of the Leyland Motor Company, who built the fantastically expensive and well-engineered Leyland 8. Whilst primarily a luxury car, it also formed the basis of Thomas's own racing car, the Leyland Thomas. How he commissioned a near-identical car, which he raced with considerable success at Brooklands, in 1923, Howie broke the world 10-mile record with an average speed of 116.1 miles an hour. However, he later admitted that he still hadn't forgotten the thrill and exhilaration of driving a steam locomotive at speed, and along with his friend Borowski, who was similarly afflicted, began to dream up plans for a miniature mainline railway. One has to remember that a hundred years ago, the railway was the fastest and most glamorous form of land transport, and well-publicized named services crossed countries and continents at high speed. I particularly like this photograph, as the Florida Special, which went from New York to Miami in 27 hours, is being chased by three Aronka C3s. Tragically, in October 1924, Louis Borowski was killed in the Italian Grand Prix at Monza. How he felt the loss of his friend most deeply, but encouraged by others, decided to continue with the railway project, partly as a tribute. Henry Greenley, who had already designed and commissioned locomotives for the project, was now asked by Howie to find a suitable site for the miniature mainline railway. They considered purchasing the Selsey Tramway, which ran from Chichester down to Selsey, and was running at considerable loss by then, but decided against it due to the number of level crossings that would have to be gated or bridged. The route was also considered in Somerset, west of the DWR main line between Western Supermare and Burnham. Sir Herbert Walker, General Manager of the Southern Railway, suggested they might consider a site on Romney Marsh, as it was flat and had excellent potential for summer traffic. Howie and Greenley visited in September 1925, and by February 1926 a light railway order had been granted. Five locomotives had been ordered even when Borowski was still alive. The Davy Paxman Company started delivering them. They were first stored in Bin's garage in New Romney. These locomotives, designed by Henry Greenley, were heavily influenced by the work of Sir Nigel Gresley on the London North Eastern Railway. By the summer of 1926, construction was well advanced enough for the Duke of York to visit and take a ride from New Romney to Jesson's farm. The Duke was invited to drive the locomotive alongside Captain Howey, and Sir Nigel Gresley sat in the tender on the coal. On arrival at Holiday Camp Station next to Jesson's farm, Sir Nigel mischievously passed his bowler hat around to gather a tip for the driver, which was then presented to the Duke. Fortunately, the Duke enjoyed Sir Nigel's humour. The eight and a half miles of railway from New Romney to Hythe opened officially on the 16th of July 1927 and was an immediate success. Twenty-eight 
tragedy had struck once again in 1926 when Captain Howie's younger brother, Captain Richard Howie, was killed whilst racing at the Boulogne Speed Week. Howie stopped motor racing after that, although he still retained a keen interest in expensive motorcars. He also converted his 1915 Rolls-Royce Silver Ghost motor car into a very useful rail car for pulling trains on the winter service. Easily capable of upwards of 60 miles an hour, this very useful machine stayed on the railway until 1961, when it was unfortunately scrapped. In 1928, the railway was extended five miles from New Romney south down to Dungeness. There were no objections to the light railway order, which was fortunate because Captain Howie had already started construction some months before. It was a very easy railway extension. The land was flat and the shingle underfoot made excellent ballast. The railway was taken over by the army during the Second World War and an armoured train was constructed. After inevitable repairs, the line was reopened in 1947. Laurel and Hardy undertook the task in true comedy style. Captain Howie died in 1963. His ashes are interred in the garden at New Romney Station. After his death, his widow quickly sold the line and moved away. However, by the late 1960s, closure and scrapping was a real possibility. In 1972, the line was purchased by a consortium led by Sir William McAlpine, scion of McAlpine's construction and a very keen railway enthusiast himself. The company, along with volunteers from the Supporters Association, run the railway to this day. The world has changed a lot in the last 100 years, not always for the better, but this railway is a real view into the past. It still has all 10 original locomotives, a lot of the buildings are original, and it really provides a glimpse into the past. It's just so enjoyable on so many levels. Best of all, it stands as a great tribute to Louis Borowski and his enthusiastic lifestyle, Henry Greenlee and his very practical engineering, and probably most of all to Captain Howie, who took this project and made it his life's work. Thank you for watching.